Welcome to Work the Left Side. I'm hyped to announce tonight's guest. I am joined by Skylar and uh, fresh from her PPW in-house debut against the one and only Liam Slater. How are we doing? You good? Yeah, I'm very, very good. How are you? Oh, I'm five by five. I'm all good. Um, happy to get this conversation underway we did try it the other day and the stars didn't align or something just wasn't happening we had technical issues so it's uh, i've been looking forward to it all week so we're here i know we've got things to talk about and yeah like i sort of said you know firstly your match against you know liam slater right? he's one of my favorite current sort of wrestlers so for me that's huge. You know, I love seeing you make your debut against him. I just think that's uh, such a, a massive deal straight away. Um, yeah. I mean, how did you find it? Uh, well, I first originally was told about, it was about in March when I first got like the, you need to get gear ready. And I was like, okay, this is happening and this is real. Um, and I was a bit nervous. I say that very, very lightly, like everyone who knows me knows that I was petrified for like weeks. Um, and then it just got closer and closer and closer. And then it was like, OK, it's showtime, time to show the world. And I stepped out and become who I am today, Skylar Rose. And yeah, it was incredible. I was so, so nervous. But Liam guided me the whole way through it. And even backstage, you know, weeks before the show, he was there. And he's just one of the supportive coaches, like, ever. I, I, again, like I said, anybody who knows me knows of my uh, admiration and respect for the guy. I think he's just amazing. I've uh, followed him for, like, the last 10, 15 years. Um, so, for me, like I said, just getting that opportunity. Obviously, we'll rewind at some point. I'll ask the generic questions, you know, how you got into wrestling and started at Pursuit and stuff like that. Uh, this was just too big of a deal for me not to address straight away kind of thing. So, like I said, you know, you're, you're in there with Liam. You're making your debut. I sort of said, you know, you must have been, like, just to coin a phrase, shit in a brick, you know, just be like, right, come on, we could do this. Eyes are on you. I can't think of anywhere better to do it though than pursuit, just because of the atmosphere and the the supportive nature of of everyone there. Yeah. So coming out, I was shocked. The roof came off of that place, and I was like, okay. Um, I did have a few of my friends there and my family there as well. And it was just incredible to have the roof come off of that place. I was not expecting that reaction. I don't know what I was expecting, but I suppose that's sort of the fear of your own mind. You're like, they're going to be silent. No one's going to make a noise. And then I came out and I was like, oh my gosh, they're actually making so much noise. <laughs> um, and it just made me feel so much more relaxed. I got in the ring and I was like, okay, let's do this. I can do this. And it made me feel so, so good. I'm guessing obviously a massive, massive part of that is the, the adrenaline. And I can't, I can only imagine again, you know, being on this side of the curtain, uh, I can't imagine you being able to kind of anticipate what the adrenaline is going to be like, you know, when you, when you first do that, when you first step out, when you hear people react to you, that must just be like, you know, electricity surging. I obviously have never had the opportunity of working in front of a crowd. So a lot of the training that I do, especially with Liam on a one-to-one -one standpoint, is just me and Liam. So if we're running matches, there's no audience, there's no one to react off of. So to come out and there to be a crowd to react to, it was just insane. Like, I can't even begin to describe how insane it was to like hear other people. And I was like, I was shocked. <laughs> 
again, it's just, you know, obviously, you know, if anybody hasn't seen it, I'd, I'd presume a majority of the audience um, will have seen it on YouTube. You know, I'm presuming a majority of people that watch this subscribe to Pursuits. Uh, obviously, you know, the match is free on their YouTube channel. So if you haven't seen it, you know, please go watch it. Uh, it's awesome. It's smooth. Um, obviously, you've got that that rush as you're coming out. Um, you know, afterwards, obviously, I'm, I'm, spoiler alert, people should have seen it by now. You know, obviously, you know, after he's cheated to win and you get in the back, you know, how long does it take to come down? Are you still, you know, buzzing for the next week? And you, you, did you feel like, you know, you, you'd done what you wanted to do? I was a little bit overwhelmed. I was like, oh my gosh, like for you, for well, for like at least two or three years, I was like, it's not going to happen. Like, it's just not going to happen. And then over the past like six, seven months, Liam built that confidence and Nathan, Liam and Nathan built that confidence inside of me. Like, it is going to happen and we're going to work towards it and we're not going to stop until we get there. And then when we do get there, we're going to push even harder so that you can go even further. And it was like, okay, I can do this. And then I started to get more confident. I started to get more smooth. And I was like, okay, like this is happening. And when I got backstage, I say backstage, but anyway, um, everyone was giving me hugs and handshakes. And it's just such a supportive environment. Like, I can't put it into words. I was so nervous beforehand and everyone could see it on me. Like I was so nervous. And then to go back and to get people hugging me and being like, oh, well done, like I'm really proud of you. And I was like, stop, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> just an emotion, just an emotion overload. I can, again, like I say, I can only imagine, but I just, yeah, I just, I, you know, the definition of like walking on air, you know, it's walking on a cloud nine kind of thing. You just feel like you're floating you know, for ages afterwards, because it's just an amazing, it's an amazing thing what you did. And uh, like I said, you know, Liam had to cheat to win as well. So, you know, that's a massive thing on, you know, a bonus for you. So uh, when somebody like Liam's got to cheat to beat you, you know, obviously that's how good you are. Yeah, we're going to have to rewrite that at some point. Can't have that. Not having that. Well, I did hear rumblings before, but we'll get to that later. I'm kind of planting seeds at the minute, so you know, uh, we'll, we'll we'll address that soon. But I've seen some rumblings before we started talking tonight online. So, right, let's do the generic stuff then. Obviously, you know, what made you take those steps through the doors in the first place? What made you want to start training? You know, what made you want to be a wrestler? Um, I'm not really sure what made me decide exactly i know that i was watching wrestling over my brother's shoulders when i was quite young and i was like oh okay that's interesting and then i sort of fell out of love with it like most people do and then uh i started to get back into it sort of 2020 when i think that was when the world went into lockdown kind of yeah. uh i was like oh uh i need to escape the world wrestling um and I was dealing with a lot of personal issues and health issues at the same time so I was like okay wrestling's my escape and I first started with Future Shock PC and I did their beginners course they were amazing uh but the transport to Manchester is just not the best unfortunately um yeah Future Shock can't say enough positive things about them. They helped me when I had no idea who I was and they are incredible. I highly recommend if you are local to Manchester that you get there because Sam Bailey, Chris Ridgway, they know what they're talking about. They really, really do. Highly recommend it. So obviously they so like you sort of said, I mean, um, so, I mean, are you, I'm presuming you're, you're kind of Yorkshire based for the fact that you go, you know, you go to Pursuits. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like an hour plus down the motorway to, to Manchester. If if you drive or somebody drives you, uh, maybe it's a couple of hours on a train. So you, you dip your toe in then at Future Shock. Um, do you then sort of hear about Pursuits online on the socials? Who kind of points you in that direction? So from there i ended up at new wave west midlands 
um, and I was there for a few months uh, and I worked and I worked. I was still really nervous, uh, but I really worked. And this was, uh, so I had a lot of time off due to like injuries and health concerns and things like that. Um, and then uh, all in was August. And then I think I joined them in September and I was like, cool, this is what I want to do. And I know I want to do this and I'm just going to keep going at it. And again, Flash Morgan Webster, another incredible trainer. Um, I've learned so much from him and, you know, I'm forever grateful for Sam, Chris and uh, Flash Morgan Webster for leading the way, like incredible bunch of people. And yeah, so I was there until like December. And then I was like, I kind of want to do one-to-one -one training. So I started looking at people that do one-to-one -one trainings and I found Liam that way. And I was like, okay, Liam does one-to-ones, let's get in contact. And I got in contact via the suit social media. And I was like, hey, uh, I'm really interested in the one-to-ones. And from there, we started in, I think we started in November, the one-to-one. -one. So I was doing both uh, at the same time, roughly. And from there, I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. And then, fun story, I relocated to Sheffield so that I could train at the suit as much as I do. <laughs> wow. um, it's, it's fun, it's intense but it's worth it and I love every second of it. Wouldn't change it for the world. Oh, I mean, you've just reeled off. Uh, obviously, you know, Future Shock, uh, nothing but love for Future Shock, spoken to so many people from there kind of thing. You know, I had Bright Strong on last week and HCC Wednesday, obviously, you know, their Future Shock, you know, graduate or still training, that kind of thing. And uh, New Wave as well. Uh, just obviously like say flash Morgan webster you got act two down there uh yeah. you got some you got some amazing people at new wave uh future shock uh are up there i mean obviously the thing is as well though i suppose it's good because future shock and pursue have a really good relationship because i know obviously if they've kind of switched you know liam went down there sam came up to pursue it, uh earlier this year or end of last year i think it was so that must be kind of cool as well that you kind of got that for you know both of them yeah so i've not i didn't manage to get to that session it was either before i joined or for whatever reason i just was unavailable um and but i've been to many of the session takeovers i don't think i've missed many of them because they've just been absolutely incredible jordan oliver brendan white uh we've got Joseph Connor's coming up. We had um, Lana Austin. We had we've Chris had Masters. people. Yeah, Chris Masters. We've had. Uh, you go the Nathan Cruz one. Unfortunately, not. No. Uh, again, I think that might have been before I joined. Um, just slightly. Um, yes, but, it was. Uh, Luke Jacobs as well, like, again. And then in October, there's the OTT takeover, which is going to be insane. Like, I'm very nervous about that one, but I'm sure that will be incredible. They always are. So uh, I've got to rewind. You kind of said you kind of start uh, sort of towards the end of last year, start of this year at Pursuit, kind of yeah. full time. You relocated, wasn't it? And then, so, I mean, it wasn't at the last house show it's the one prior to that where you kind of made your debut against Liam yeah. so it's not many months in really you know it's less than several months after you started 100% you know at Pursuit that you, you made your debut um I've known people be there for longer and still not made a debut kind of thing so again that's you know I'm just you know pointing out how well you must be doing on the journey you know to get that debut it is a lot of hard work um, and I train in every aspect for it. I was eating a lot more. I was working on my gym. I was there as often as I could be. I was there Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, sometimes on a Saturday. And, you know, I was like 
I'm going to show my face, I'm going to work and we're going to see if this can actually become possible. And then with the one to ones, Liam helped me build my confidence and was like, we've got this in the bag. And then he said to me, who do you want to face? And I was like, well, who better than the man who trained me? <laughs> so it was incredible. It was incredible. And that's the thing is well, not a lot of people do that straight away either. That's generally when I've spoken to people, you know, that's that's on their list. You know, I know who's trained them kind of thing. I'll mention the name. And they're like, oh, I'm so desperate to have a match with them kind of thing. Um, so, again, that's not something that happens all the time. So you've kind of ticked a lot of, of people's boxes but mm. in, with your first match kind of thing. So that is very, like, very cool. He said that he would do it. Um, and it, uh, like he was like, sure, we can make that happen. No problem. And I was like, oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I mean, I think we watch you in there now. You obviously, you know, you're working so hard. Uh, you know, you, you're kind of putting everything together, um, developing the. So that's that's what I always like to speak about as well. You know, when people, I know people when they're on the journey, it's there's so much more to it than just doing what you do in the ring kind of thing. You know, you kind of got to develop yourself. You got to develop your personality. You know, the character. Um, just there's so many different aspects that I think kind of get overlooked sometimes. So, obviously, you know, this Kyla Rose character, you know, is that have you got sort of like a path in mind for 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 Skyla? You know, where, how the character's going to grow, develop, evolve? I I'm not entirely sure yet, but what I do know is that. I'm working hard to improve it every single day. Like there's not a day where I'm not thinking about what I can do to take myself to the next level. I'm like, okay, what can I do today that's going to help me in six months time? What can I do today that's going to help me in a year's time? So I'm always trying to think. Uh, my brain doesn't stop. <laughs> okay, obvious question then. Um, so obviously, I mean, do you still... I know you said you kind of got into watching wrestling, you know, during kind of the, the global bastard kind of thing. Um, are you still watching it or are you able to watch it now that you're kind of doing it in training? Are you able to watch it as a fan or do you find yourself, like I said, if, you, if your brain's never turning off, are you sat there watching it, you know, critiquing stuff, picking stuff, you know, making notes? So um, I spend a lot of my time making notes. If I'm watching, I'm making notes. It's very hard for me to switch off. Even sometimes at independent shows, I start making notes in my head. I'm like, cool, what what did what went well? And I'm like, cool, okay. And then I'm like, how can I make myself better? And I do that a lot with AEW as well. Like AEW is what I watch mostly because it's what I I focused on. Uh, Eddie Kingston essentially got me into AEW. <laughs> uh, I I love Eddie Kingston. I think he's fantastic amazing on the microphone he's real i could i could just spend the rest of this interview talking about eddie kingston <laughs> i absolutely love eddie kingston um but yeah he got me into it and i was like cool i'm hooked and from there i just i find it hard to sit back and watch wrestling and just enjoy it uh, which is not the best thing to say but like I, I don't know why, I just really struggle to like sit there and go, that was really cool, without getting a notebook out and being like, right, so, uh, <laughs> let's make notes, shall we? <laughs> and you're not the only person, so many people I speak to, you know, do exactly the same thing. You know, the, the common statement is, I know when it's been a really good match because I haven't taken any notes kind of thing. That's kind of like the takeaway, you know, like you've seen an absolute bomb, buddy. You, you know, you've seen a match of the year contender. Because at no point did you think, oh, I'll make you like, you've literally just been, holy crap, that was awesome. So, yeah, you're not the only person. And there's a heck of a lot of people out there that uh, struggle just to kind of step back and just enjoy it kind of thing sometimes. Yeah, it is hard. It is hard. We've kind of mentioned it before. I've kind of beat around the bush. We've talked about, you know, the pursuit stuff. We've talked about the training. Um I saw this earlier. I need to talk about it because my head's just going to go if I don't mention it now. Um, so before, you know, I've I'd, I'd kind of seen online um, something to do with some drama between yourself and Lou Nixon. Well, I could get this off my chest. 
Lou got in my face and held that RPW championship up. Um, and then he decided at another time he was going to attack me from behind. And it's got to a point now where I can't let this go. I can't stop thinking about it. And Lou knows where I'm at. Lou knows where I train. So if you've got a problem with me, Lou, you know where to find me. PPW does in-house shows every single month. So how about you come find me and you fight me? Oh, that would be... Oh, I can't even... Um, you, uh, very rarely I'm left speechless. But the thought of that is, you know, if that gets announced at some point, if that happens... Um, a big Lou as well, though, you know, it's just kudos. You know, you step, yeah, you, you're stepping up, you, you, you're telling it as it is, you, you know, you, you've issued the challenge. It's now for Lou to be like. Really, really respect Lou. I've got a hell of a lot of love for Lou. I think he's one of the best deathmatch wrestlers and wrestlers that Europe has to offer. But when you get in my face and you attack me from behind, I've got a little bit of a problem and maybe we need to fix her because that's not you, Lou. I don't know who this Lou is, but it's not you. So come and find me. You know where I'm at. Oh, I just, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. We'll see, you know, what's, uh, what, what happens. Uh, but, you know, as a fan, you know, if I see that match advertised on any of the pursuits, socials, I am going to go absolutely hyper, hyper. Uh, I'll just post it everywhere. I will be like, yes, this is, that's a match I want to see. And that's a match, talk about getting going in at the deep end. Obviously, you, you've had your match against Liam. You know, you get you get a match, you, you get answers from Lou. You get to confront Lou face to face. And, you know, you get to, and if you don't like the explanation and, you know, it hits the fan and you two guys have to, you know, rumble, then... I, again, I'm kind of lost for words. I just think it's going to be absolutely amazing, and so much respect for you. As you said, lose a big guy um, to just to, to call him out with respect as well. You know, I have so much uh, respect for him. Like people don't understand. I really do respect him, but I'm not quite sure what the problem is. If he thinks that I'm not going to give him everything I've got, then he's got another thing coming because. I have fought so hard to get this far. Like, what makes you think that I'm not going to throw everything I've got at you to make sure that I can stay? Oh, this is just right. OK, I'm going to uh, I'm just going to keep talking like a crazy fool, like because I'm overly excited about this subject matter. So. I'm not saying this is going to be easy. It's going to be the toughest challenge of my life. But I fought through so many obstacles you know just to get here so imagine what i'm willing to do to get through lou oh it's just so right we'll we'll put a pin in that because that's just that that's gonna continue to to sort of boil i think so we'll uh we'll address i'm sure you and me will talk about this down the line you know like i said anything like anytime i see anything to do with it i'm gonna be all over it but um you mentioned like you know, medical side and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not going to delve into uh, people's medical things, or but just what I am always curious about is I've spoken to a few people who got into wrestling to improve, you know, like the fitness to improve their medical condition. Um, so they kind of found that it really helped. You know, it was a huge benefit to them. Uh, do you kind of as as wrestling had that kind of positive impact on you as well? Wrestling saved me, to be to be fair, uh, it, it saved me. When I, I don't mind opening up about it, I've been quite open and honest that I suffer with an eating disorder, I'm recovering from an eating disorder. Um, and I was really, really struggling. I didn't know what to do. I was so, I felt so alone. And then I turned to wrestling. And there were so many people that were willing to help. And... I was shocked because I was like, do I deserve this help? Like, I was in such a bad place of mind that I was like, I don't know. I don't know about this. And then 
when I started at Future Shock, I was like, I'm too small, you know, no one's going to believe me. And that continued the whole way through. Like, I never really stopped thinking that until, you know, Nathan and Liam said to me, you're ready. And I was like, but I'm small. And they were like, size doesn't matter. You know, you're ready. I was like, uh, uh, okay, I'm ready. I can do it. <laughs> um, and that was when I realised that, like, wrestling had helped me because I started having to focus on the nutrition. I started to focus on, like, I need to get stronger because I need to be able to fight people. And it's not easy to be able to fight people if you're not looking after your nutrition. Um, it's been very, very hard. I'm not going to go into too much detail about it, but it's been tough. Um, we're not perfect yet. And I doubt we will ever get to perfect, but we are a long way from where we started. So I'm very proud of that journey. 100%, 100%. You should be so crazy proud of yourself. That is, uh, honestly, that's touches close to home. Uh, so I'm just going to be nothing but love and respect uh, for that. And again, I think you're in the best place. You know, like, so we're like, again, you know, I've spoken to about 30 odd people from Pursuit now, kind of thing. You know, I kind of, it's like my way away, it's my home away from home when it comes to like wrestling podcasts and guests and stuff. Um, and the common factor for everyone there is they're, they're awesome. Everybody's awesome. Everybody's crazy supportive. Everybody, you know, just goes out of the way to elevate each other and be there for each other and to listen and to talk. So, yeah, I think, you know, for that reason, I don't, I don't think there's anywhere better you, you could be. I felt like a, f a few weeks ago, I felt like I wasn't doing enough. And a few people sat down and had conversations with me and was like, you can't do much more. Like, you are travelling to shows, you are putting yourself out there, you're here, you're there, you're everywhere. Like, stop comparing yourself and chill out. Like, I promise you're doing fine. And then I was like, okay, if they say that I'm doing enough, I must be doing enough. Like, time to get out of my own head. <laughs> uh, yeah. Stop being your own worst enemy. Again, people who know me will laugh at me saying that because... I don't, I never heed my own advice. You know, I, I say that, I'll say that to somebody, but I, I don't listen to myself. I'm, I'm the same. It's like, once you're in there, um, I was on about it to somebody before. It's kind of like you, you're stuck in a loop. Like, you get mad at yourself for getting mad yeah. at yourself, for getting mad at yourself, for getting mad at yourself. And then it's just like, oh crap, I've got this infinitive loop going on of just me being mad at myself and being mad at myself. Like, oh, it's hard to break it. Um, but so obviously, as well, you know, you've talked about going to, watching indies and stuff so you're not just you watch obviously you watch AEW we've talked to Eddie Kingston I um, will come back to the king at some point um, but you obviously go to shows as well so you know what promotions around you do you do you get to go to see you know as a fan as well as as well as networking so I know it's a huge part of the business is networking I love traveling there is no distance that I won't travel. I travelled to Cardiff once for a show. Um, I've travelled, you know, Liverpool, Manchester. I'm constantly in Manchester. I'm always finding new shows. I'm yet to go to a True Grit, but that is on the list. Um, I've got, I do TNT, Sopro, Rise. I do quite a lot. A lot of these are deathmatch based, which is... <laughs> Oh dear, what am I getting myself in for? <laughs> um, and yeah, so there's a few new promotions that I'm looking at going to. I say new, they're not new, but they're new to me. So I'm always looking at like expanding my horizons and I've always got like new places on the list. So I went to Future Shock. Um, I've just been to so many that it's really hard for me to keep keep track. Uh I think that's how we started talking in the first place. Because, like, you know, I was all about like I think it was like, you know, I was all about like soft pro, and I was all about a few other promotions. I was you know, like sharing their stuff, and then you would comment on it. You would, you know, you'd be talking about like previous show or you know this happening or that happening, and it was just kind of like, yeah, you know, I kind of got talking to you because like, at first, you know, I was just like, oh, you know, this this person's just a massive fan of wrestling. That's awesome. You know, it's somebody to talk to, like minded. Um, and then obviously start talking a bit more, 
and I was like, oh, you're actually doing it as well. So I'm like, right, okay, we'll have a chat. Um, but I think, I think as, you know, as a fan and as somebody in the business now, um, it's crazy. You know, there's just so many promotions out there. There's such a wealth of options. You know, like I say, it's so easy just to go to a show. You could travel for hours if you wanted to, or, you know, there's probably a very good, sh- there's probably a good show no more than 30 minutes away from most people. Yeah, I mean, I I like the traveling and I like to show people that I'm willing to travel. I'm like, hey, I'll go and sit on a train for four hours each way and come and see your show. Um, you know, I love watching wrestling. I'm a wrestler who loves watching wrestling. Crazy concept, you know. <laughs> um, it's, it's the traveling, though, I think it's a crazy concept because sometimes, like, you, you know, you, you put that much into training, you put that much effort into, you know, going to, like, seminars and doing this that and the other sometimes it would be totally understandable to be like i I just can't you know physically get up and go to you know to a show as a fan sometimes i will admit that it has been quite difficult especially like sometimes i'll try and do like two or three shows in a weekend and i'm like let's go from here to here to do this to do this to do this to do this and i'm like i'm only human you know (laughs) uh maybe this isn't the best idea and sometimes I have to remind myself that like as much as I'd love to be in six different places at once I can't be um and yeah as, as disappointing as that is as much as I'd love to be in six different places at once uh, I'm only one person <laughs> I love that so I've just had a thing I was like I'm only human I'm not Jeebus I'm just <laughs> that's a phrase I'm gonna coin that phrase you know we can't be at that many shows I'm only human but obviously that's Jeebus right. being next like but unfortunately, I just, I can't be. <laughs> no, totally, totally right. I would obviously hugely shout out if you get a chance, you know, any True Grit show. Um, yeah. The one in York next month is is shaping up to be, look, is looking awesome. Uh, Big Will, Big Will Cruz um, versus Brady Phillips. Now, to me, that would be the big hurdle for most people getting into the business now. Is starting to cut promos, starting to build that confidence, you know, just to grab a microphone and tell it as it is so that's definitely something that i'm working on because as many people know that that is one of my weaknesses is being able to pick up a microphone and just speak but uh we've been working on that over the past couple of weeks working on cutting promos on different people and yeah i'm definitely getting much more comfortable and more confident with it so for a matter of time <laughs> Well, I mean, based on, obviously, I know it wasn't a promo before when you were talking about Lou kind of thing, you know, that was obviously, you know, from the heart is genuine. But when you're cutting promos, yeah, if you can kind of tap into that, you know, just make it, you know, as genuine and as heartfelt as possible because, you know, it just comes across and it's like, yep, okay, you know, they mean business. I will not want to mess with this person. I'm just going to step back now. Um, but yeah, to me, that would be my biggest hurdle because, Again, very similar to yourself. I just, I, I would lack the confidence to have the execution in what I want to say. I wouldn't believe what I wanted to say, so I don't think anybody else would believe what I wanted to say. So when I was on holiday, uh, I practiced cutting promos because I can't sit still and I can't relax. So I would sit and cut promos on various different people, and then I'd send them to Liam and be like, "What do you think? What do you think? What do you think?" And he'd be like. Are you, do you believe what you're saying kind of a thing and I'm like no I don't <laughs> and then I started to get more fired up and I was like okay now I believe what I'm saying and then I sent it to him and it was like look at the difference I was like yeah <laughs> there's so much difference and I think again you know as a, as a fan it's just the authenticity I, I, I was worried about I struggled to say that word sometimes I thought I was going to say authenticity but yeah the authenticity of what you say has to has to hit a fan and I think that's one of the hardest parts of the promo so like I say if you know if you're hitting those marks already you're getting more confident with it uh it's only going to be a matter of time um you know what I think based on what we talked about earlier you just cut loads of promos on Lou <laughs> and then just get that genuine you know you'll you'll know how it should feel when it's genuine because it will be genuine because you know obviously yeah you know he disrespected you and that's that's legit i mean i have learned a lot from watching eddie like eddie kingston 
because I know he's going to get back to Eddie at some point. I'm so happy. I've watched a lot of his promos, and he means what he says. Like, there's no doubt about that. And I'm like, he's not holding back anything. And I was like, okay, what can I take from this? Stop hiding my emotions because I'm quite good at being like, okay, let's fight. And then I'm like, would anyone be threatened by that? Not really. Uh, so I've started to take a few pa- a few notes out of Eddie's pages and been like, okay, mean what you say because, you know, this is real. Wrestling is real and mean what you say. So I mean what I say now. That's awesome. Did you um? Yeah, I presume obviously you were on about AEW from with, uh, from the last couple of years, kind of thing. I think one of the best promos I saw, or within the last couple of years, was the when Eddie Kingston was uh, having a match up against CM Punk, you know, AEW, and there was, there was like zero build, and like the match was the week, like in a week's time or something. They're not a chance to build it, and they just gave them ten minutes in the ring, you know, Punk versus Kingston with a microphone. And those guys just cut a promo on each other. And Eddie's was just, you know, when he was going on about you guys disrespecting me in Ring of Honor, you always looked at me like I was trash, you know, just because of how I am, how I look. You know, you, you called me a slob and all this kind of sort of stuff. And I was just like, right, on the back of that promo, I now want to buy that pay-per-view. Mm. It's, it's funny to me how I love stories in wrestling. If you can tell a good story and get me invested, I'm so in, like, so in. Love a good story. Why should I be invested? You know, love wrestling, but why, why should I be invested? Oh, he's disrespected you. Oh, okay. How has he disrespected you? Oh, he slapped you in the face. Oh, okay. Now I can see a story. So you want to get him back for slapping you in the face. Right, got it. If you can tell me a story, I'm like, I'm so into it. I love storytelling and wrestling. And there's been some great examples of it. In the independent scene, AEW, you know, I watch a lot of American independents as well. And, you know, the storytelling is such a vital part of wrestling. Fully, fully agree. Any, you know, I, I've been on this soapbox for the last couple of months, unfortunately. I won't repeat things I've said numerous times, but I am totally there. And unfortunately, I'm kind of becoming... It's, I'm, become really sort of uh, OCD about it at times it's like you know uh, I can I can watch so many exhibition matches and I'm like awesome amazing match you know both people did it absolutely great this person won awesome why do I care mm. why do I care that person won I'm like, I yeah. need you know I'm just like I need I need a story I need a stake I need a purpose you know Put a time limit on a match. Have it as like a 10-minute time limit match. And if neither person wins because the time run out, that's fine. That's the stake. That's the, that's that's the, the story. story. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I'm going to stop myself before I go. Right. But yeah, that's a massive bug bearing me at the minute. Like I say, I'm getting quite OCD with it where I'm just like, I need to step back. Otherwise, it's going to start. I'm not going to enjoy shows as much. But I'm just like... Yeah. Yeah. Just give them stories. I, I need more stories. I need something to get my teeth into, you know. Even if it's a face to face, you know, just two people staring at each other as they're walking past and it being yeah. like, you know, I don't need that match now for another nine months, but I know it's coming. So I'm happy to wait for it, but it's there. So I'll go into a little bit of a ramble about a story that I watched in wrestling a while ago. I think it was about four years ago. I can't remember the exact date. Uh, It was American independent scene, uh, H2O, which is a promotion I watch quite a lot. And there was a faction called 440. And at the time, it consisted of Ricky Shane Page, Atticus Kogar, uh, Gregory Iron, Eddie Only, and Beverly, Bobby Beverly. um, And they took over this company, like absolutely took over this company. And it couldn't have felt more real if it tried. They did everything they could to make it feel real. The promos were incredible. The way that they built it up, show after show after show, was just incredible. And I was like, that is how it should be. I should be invested on the edge of my seat thinking what's going to happen the next time I tune into this show and every single time I watched the show it was 
just getting more and more exciting. I was like, oh my gosh, I love this. And then it went into another promotion called Juicy W Game Changer Wrestling. And it exploded even more there. And I was like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. Wrestling is so cool. And I've not stopped thinking about it, as you can tell, like four years later, three, four years later, and I'm still talking about it. And it's on my mind constantly. Oh, that's that's how you know when it's done and it's done right. That's the impression it leaves. You know, you can. I've got that genuine excitement just from hearing you talk about it. You know, like say four years later, kind of thing. So obviously yeah. it was done so well. And as a wrestling fan, it leaves it kind of it, it imprints on you. And you're like, right, okay, they've set the bar now. Uh, whether obviously they know it or not, they've set a bar. Uh, I, I need somebody else now to kind of you know exceed it or at least match it. You know, because that's what you expect. Yeah. Um, so, but, you know, again, it's just for the, you know for Skyler. You know, where do you sort of see the? Are you kind of? I suppose again, I, I, I've got to pull back on that question because it's not really you that writes the stories. It's when you get the bookings, you go into the promotions. Um, but you know, hopefully, when you you know you're you're on a show or you know you get a booking, you get a chance to kind of work on the narrative you get to work on the story a bit and kind of have some guidance on it there's quite a few people i've got a list quite long of people that i'm like i could tell a good story with this person because the way that they present themselves the way that their characters are i'm like easy like you can easily tell a story with so many different wrestlers in brit wrestling at the minute there's so many good people in brit wrestling it's just, yeah, you know, you're preaching to the to the choir. I'm kind of like, I think as well, like I said earlier, you know, I mentioned the thing about characters. Um, I think characters playing a massive part on that. Now, whether it's them turn up to 11, whether it's outlandish characters, um, I think you can look at them, though, and you can sort of like say you can imagine storylines because you know what they bring to the table straight away based on based on the character. Um, so you're, I think you basically will do what, as a fan, I'm, I'm a fucker for it. I fantasy book the sh- the shit out of stuff you know i'll see like a show poster you'd be like oh that match that match that match oh what if those two had a match or you know then they did that and uh yeah you know it's just fantasy booking it's just awesome there's like i said there's a very long list and i think we know who's at the top of the list uh we shall say no more about that person but <laughs> they know exactly who they are yeah, uh, yeah. and i've got a list of people and i'm like it's a matter of time and when it happens i'd love to be able to show storytelling like storytelling is such one of my favorite concepts like tell me a story let me let me tell you a story about why i care so much about this and that's what i love yeah yeah a good wrestling show has an amazing story and you know, as we just talked about, you know, it's something you can still get excited about four years later. Yeah. You know, you're telling me about the story that you saw, and I'm getting excited because you're excited. Um, it's just, yeah, that's wrestling done right. Uh, you love to see it, and I kind of want to see more of it. Uh, not to be smirch, as I say, you know, the matches that don't have a storyline. I know not every match on the card can have a storyline. That's crazy. But get the balance and... Give us something. You know what? I'd love to see you over like somewhere like Odyssey or something. You know, I think Skylar Rose at Odyssey will just be like, ah. Yeah, they are on the bucket list. I have got a long list of promotions <laughs> on the bucket list. Uh, I, I'm trying my best to make it to you all, I promise. Um, there was just a lot of promotions trying to get back to Red Pro, trying to get here, there, and everywhere. And yeah, I'm just going to be showing my face in as many different places as I can. One place I do want to mention is Bridge Pro Wrestling. They are a semi new promotion, I would say, Um, but their shows have been so, so good. I've not even been to a show, but the amount of good reviews I've heard from people attending their shows, I cannot wait to attend their next one. 30th of August, get your tickets. We've got heat, Bridge Pro Wrestling. Get your tickets. Because that's, that's as well, you know, I say, because there's so much out there. I'm like, the name rings a bell. I'm certain 
I've checked out their stuff, but have I or am I just imagining it? You know, because as a, again, you know, as a fan, you know what it's like. It's so sort of overwhelming. There's so much choice out there. It's very easy to be like, I forget this one or I forget this one. Or, um, but oh, you mentioned Rave Pro. You know, save yourself a journey. Get yourself to Doncaster when they come up in October. It, I think it is. There's so many. It feels like Brit, Brit wrestling is just exploding at the minute. Like. There is so much going on. Progress, you know, there, there's just so much going on. And I'm like trying to keep up with everything and everyone as much as I possibly can. And as much as I'm trying, it's nope. not going <laughs> very well. No. I, I, I try. I try. Um, I've kind of set my uh, limit, t- limitations, we'll say. It's like, you know, I know Rev Pro is awesome. I don't know Progress is awesome. You know, I know there's a hell of a lot of promotions down south that are amazing. Um, but I've kind of got to know my limits. It's like that's why I try and cover, you know, the promotions up north, like up north, soft pro, TNT, yeah. through grit, you know, wrestling in Newcastle. I'm like, right, once we hit the Midlands, I'm out of my territory. You know, I've kind of got to stop. Otherwise, I'm just going to go absolutely. I'll be sat there like Clockwork Orange or something, just with my eyes open, watching, you know, wrestling 24 seven. I do try my best, like, and I'll. I'll ask people, uh, especially like Jeebus, how did the show go? What did you think of the show? And I'll ask different people and I'll see what people put up and I'm like, cool, this has happened, this has happened, this has happened. Make note, make note, make note. And then I'm like, cool, I know what's going on. Even though I'm not there, I know what's going on. And it's it's quite cool to have people that I'm like, hey, how did this go? And they're like, oh, this was really good. You have to watch this when it goes up. Okay. And the minute it goes up, I'm there and I'm watching it because I trust people's words. I'm like, if that if that person says that they're good, it's going to be a good match. And yeah, uh, talking of North, I was gutted I couldn't get to Thunderstruck 2. That looks so good. Um, but I will be attending North more and more as much as I can because North just put on banger after banger after banger. Like, I just can't believe the amount of quality that is coming out of North just consistently. It's just incredible. It's crazy, isn't it? It's, it's just, just like, I know I won't mind, but, you know, I, I got offered a couple of free tickets as well, and I was just like, no, I can't make it. I've got my six-year-old. You know, as much as I would like to take him up there, was, it's not fair. I can't do it and bring him back too late. Um, but, you know, again, yeah, I've heard it was an amazing show um, from most people. I heard from one person who just didn't enjoy it. But, you know, you can't please everyone. But 99.9% of the people absolutely loved it, raved about it, said it was awesome. And uh, the thing is as well, though, the Pursuit boys and girls, uh, you know, and just seem to, be, uh, <laughs> seem to be kind of, you know, going up there and uh, taking over. We do like a good old takeover. Atomic Wrestling, we took that over. <laughs> saying, just saying. Um, <laughs> oh, I'll and, just add another thought. Sorry, go on. And then we've got like a few other. We had OJ go up to Future Shock and Gentleman Jim Maguire go up to Future Shock. So like, I'm noticing, I'm seeing where people are going and I'm like, cool. This is really cool. It's a, it's a PPW takeover. And we're going to take over. So. I can't remember who it was. So I just, but uh, you just remind me, you know, because again, you know, we're, we're talking storylines, we're talking, you know, the possibilities of stories, what you could do to make stories happen. Um, factions in British wrestling, they just aren't enough. You know, they're just, and I was talking to, I can't remember, I think it might have been Bright, I'm sure it was Bright Strong, uh, down, you know, Future Shock. And I was just on about like, just imagine, you know, just a, a training school, just being like, you know what, let's just go. You know, like so I said, the PPW kind of did it at Atomic, but you, you can imagine like just a lot of people from Pursuit just crashing a promotion, like old school NXT style, you know, just turning up and be like, right, we're taking over, this is ours now. And it was just like, oh my God. I'd love to see it. We've got enough people. Like, imagine a Will Cruz, a Kemper, Nathan, Liam, you know, Eve. We would take over, and like, I'm fairly confident in that. So yeah. maybe put that idea to Liam and Nathan and get back. 
probably would it by Nathan. You know, that's more of his street. I think Nathan would be all for that. I've seen his promos. I've seen him on Instagram when he's driving to places, being all happy and giddy that, you know, he's going to go ruin somebody's day, as Nathan does. Um, but, yeah, to me, that's just like, you know, that's just wrestling 101. That's just storytelling. You can imagine the, the stories that could be told or the fun that could be had with, like, a rival faction coming into a, into a promotion. Um, it's not something you see. It's it's one thing that PPW does a lot differently. Like we come up with ideas and Nathan just runs with it. Like Nathan's like, let's do it. Let's take over Atomic. Let's do this. Yeah. Hell yeah. This is what it's all about. Making wrestling fun. Like wrestling should be fun. Exactly. And that's the thing as well, you know, obviously, um, that's why I think Pursuit stands out. Again, you know, I'm not besmirching any other school. I've got a lot of love for so many of the schools in the country. But there's not many schools that I know of that do, like, that will go to Mexico, you know, take three or four people over to Mexico kind of thing, or Rome, or, you know, somewhere else kind of thing. And just, they're international. I know they're a UK school, but they've got a huge international feel about them. Um and I'm going to put it down to like the Instagram and stuff, you know, like a million views on some of the reels and things like that. You know, they, you guys have just got, you know, such a, you've got eyes on the product. Nathan is quite good at helping me like build up my Instagram because he knows what it takes. And I'm like, I'm learning from him constantly. So I'm forever grateful for that as well. I mean, but I mean, how does it feel for you being on the inside, though, kind of thing? You know, in that, you know, you get, you, the reels get like a hundred thousand views or a million views, or you know, and if you're in one of those reels, you know, you you've got eyes. You know, it's just advertising your brand. It's a bit nerve wracking at times. You're like, oh, that is a lot of people viewing my like viewing me, uh, but. At the same time, like it's just so incredible to have that many eyes on us. Um, yeah, it's just incredible, really. So the next time they go on tour, tell me you're going to be sort of fighting and scrapping to be on the list of people that gets to uh, grab the passport and go somewhere. I'll fight anyone except Kemper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. I I don't know what it is, but everyone wants to see me go up against Kemper. Listen, I, I don't. Right, with Lou Nixon. Why do you want to put me up against Kemper? Come on, guys. I don't. I'll, I'll hold my hands up. I'm not one of those people. I, you know, I'd, I'd love to see you tag with Kemper. I yes. don't want to see you go. Yes, you know, that would be amazing. That would be such a good team. But uh, um, again, you know, all joking aside, I love Kemper. The guy is, you know, he's like in my top five. I think I've got nothing but um, all the time in the world for him. Spoke to him again recently. And that's an amazing transformation. If you if you get chance or if you watch bits of it here or there, but watch the original Kemper episode and then watch him a couple of weeks ago when I spoke to him. You know, I can imagine doing the same thing with you. Like if I talk to you again in a year, you know, I think, you know, Skyler in a year is just going to be like, yeah, you know, Lou Dixon, I kicked his ass. you just be putting promos on me for an hour. And I'll just say it like, all right, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Hey, I mean, who's to say what the future holds, right? I'm very excited. I just, I just think your confidence is going to grow and grow and grow. Um, so I it, you know, well, you know better than I do, you know, it's a confidence game. The more you do it, the more confident you become. Um, and the smoother you become, the better you become. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to sort of seeing your, your confidence build and build and build and build. I think you're going to be like, you're fierce now. I think you're going to be fierce in 12, you're going to be even fiercer in 12 months. I've come a long way in the seven months when I first had my training. I first had a training match with Liam in probably January, I want to say. I was so nervous. And then it got to like, we were doing one a month pretty much. So it was like February, March. And then when I did the Lana Austin session takeover, that's when I knew that I was like, cool, the confidence is there. And having Lana, who has also trained me, um, you know, say 
wow, like you've come on so far, your confidence and your strikes have come on. I was like, oh, oh, I'm doing something right. And like, it's being recognized. Because a lot of times I feel, feel like I'm not doing anything or I'm doing something and like, you know, nobody's nobody's seeing it. It's all going under under the rug, for example. And, I'm, and then all of a sudden somebody will be like, oh, let's see what you did like two weeks ago. I'm like, you did? And you don't realize how many eyes you've got on you and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's it, though. It goes to show you, like, so say, you know, people are paying attention, people are watching, and you know, the trajectory is, you know, on the upward curve. You know, you, you're doing things right, you're getting better. Uh, like, I say, even like, you know, you might not even notice it, but like, say, if somebody hasn't seen you for a few months and they see you and they're like, oh, shit, you know, like you, you know, you're just miles ahead of where you were a couple of months ago. Yeah, I, I don't give myself enough credit <laughs> i'm like oh that's cool and then i'm like okay what's next and then everyone's like maybe you should like reflect on how far you've come in like the past seven eight months and then i look back and i go oh my god i've come so far <laughs> it's not until you look back at the footage and you go oh my gosh wow <laughs> and that's when i go okay all right maybe i have come a bit further than i thought i had I th- and then yeah just stop breathe and yeah just appreciate what you know what you've done you know again uh, very similar you know you're not you're not the kind of person to hype yourself up to acknowledge any improvement within yourself kind of thing you're just like yeah it's what it is i'm doing what i'm doing uh it's, it's you know i don't see any improvement so there must not be any but to the outside they're all looking at you and being like yes you know from here to here kind of thing and um it's just yeah it's crazy so take that time step outside yourself and acknowledge the awesomeness and the improvement i will talk about one more goal that i want to achieve i have mentioned this on social media but i'm going to mention it here because like manifestation and all of that thing so at some point in the long term future, I really want Tom Campbell to announce me to the ring. That is my goal. That is my goal. That is when I will know that I have made it as a professional wrestler. That's when I'll know. When he says that I'm coming down to that ring, I know I've made it. That's when ah, I know. Good old Tom. We love Tom. He's such a positive human being. He's got so much positive energy associating that with north you know to me that's kind of saying oh you know i want tom campbell that to me is also being kind of like you know i want to step out and i want to walk down that north ramp into a north ring like i said long-term goal but i'm gonna work and work and work and i am going to get there one day like i'm just going to keep working until i get there that's amazing um just clock the time um we have been talking for a while. Uh, it's flown by. I'm just, I'm still, there's certain times when I get just too excited and I'm just kind of trying, trying to remain calm um, and just not, you know, you've got to be talking story and I just got to be talking about the importance of story. You know, you this whole thing with Little Nixon. I'm just, I've been very hyped this episode. So apologies. Uh, I've been rambling a bit more than normal. Um, so, I'm going to, last thing I'll, I'll talk about, you mentioned the Lana Austin uh, takeover session. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, Lana is next level, one of the best in the country at the moment kind of thing. Um, I can only presume, you know, that session was just like, you know, sitting there like a massive sponge and just being like, right, take it all in. Because again, it was also, she's good in the ring, but her character is just like on point. You know, it's just the importance of mannerisms and character work so during that session takeover i am a firm believer that this is what made the match with liam happen this is what made my debut happen because during the session takeover me and liam had a match there was loads of us there and we all had matches and me and liam had a match and i tried like 
I put everything into it as I always try my hardest to do. I put everything into it. And then at the end, I got like a massive reaction. Everyone was clapping. Lana hugged me and then we all got emotional and wrestling, you know. <laughs> um, and that's when I was like, oh, OK, cool. And then I think it was like a few days after that, where Liam was like, get, you, get your gear. Like, this is happening. And I was like, oh. And I, I'm a firm believer that it was the Lana Austin session takeover that like it started to really really sink in and he was like we can make it happen so like that's all down to Lana I I'm forever grateful for Lana um I've talked to her about this many a times and I'm like I'm so thankful for you and she's like you're the one that did the work and I'm like no you take the credit I don't like the credit you take it <laughs> anyone but me yeah you know it's, it's all you another again stepping outside reflecting self-reflection acknowledge the inner worth um but yeah again you know everybody else is you know worthy everybody else it's because of everybody else it's not because of me or because of you but no it is it was, it was you she she may have in, inspired but you put the graft in you did what you needed to do and uh you set it in motion so yeah that was on you so congratulations it was a lot of hard work um but yeah i i will pass that credit to lana and lana will end up probably passing it back to me <laughs> <laughs> no it's all yours i'm passing it to you so you 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 keep that credit um right uh where can people uh see what you're up to keep an eye on this lou nixon story you know this development you know what what's going on from there you know please plug your socials so people can keep an eye on this because this is going to build and if I've got anything to do with it, you know, everybody's going to know about it. Okay, so I believe both my ats are the same. Um, and that is at Skylar Rose PW on Instagram and Twitter. You will find me posting quite often because I post quite often. <laughs> uh, but you will definitely see the development of what goes down with Lou and a few other things that are in the pipeline as well just i'm just ah, i'm just happy um obviously you know where to find us uh wtls uh 420 on twitter or x and wtls 316 on instagram which is my boy ash so feel free to message him or talk to him or if he says anything on insta like besmirch ellis barker it's not me i didn't do it it's not ash that's i'm not the insta guy you know i love ellis i think ellis you know, maybe, maybe music any given day. Um, so yeah, that's where find us. Hit us up. Uh, as always, you know, thank you for watching. Hit like, hit subscribe, share, comment, do all the boring stuff I always tell you to do at the end of every episode. Uh, keep your eyes peeled. And uh, if you haven't been to watch it yet, please head over to the YouTube channel as well. Um, I uploaded Vuzik versus Ace Matthews from Tidal 30 minute Iron Man match yesterday on YouTube. It's on our channel for free. Thanks to Tidal for allowing that. And uh, yeah, go check it out. It's a banging match. And uh, we'll see you again very soon. Thank you for watching, Skylar. Thank you so much for giving me your time and talking to you very much for watching. Skylar, thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you again very soon. Goodbye.